Hello everybody and welcome to episode 8 of my tutorial series for Dice and Sphere program. I'm Icon and in the last episode we have balanced out our science production and for today we will do our first leap to another planet in our solar system. We are doing this mostly because we want to acquire titanium. Titanium is what we're going to need to get along with our new technology. It ends up with a structure matrix. This is going to be what we need to unlock further technologies. The next bigger milestone we are setting our eyes on will be also the technology of the planetary logistics system. With this technology, we will be able to automatically transport goods from one planet to another. But to get that done, we need to research the thruster technology and a lot of other bigger technologies that will be tickling, trickling down in the background. So first off I'm going to queue up the technologies that we need for the structural matrix. Between the episodes I have also completed the tier 2 drive engine technology which we need to travel between planets in the first place. And uh, let's set on up the thruster technology. And last but not least I think now we should be able to enqueue it. No, vertical construction level 1 needs to be researched for that. Did you know? I certainly didn't. So, let's see. Now we can enqueue that. So these will be the things that will be running in the background for this episode. So before we are going to get on over to another planet, let's make sure we got all the stuff we need. First off, we need titanium ore. Quite a bunch of it, so you can just get on up and produce a bit of that stuff in your pocket. You, of course, can also just uh, put up a furnace and let it do the, th the job for you. So, the titanium ingots are only one part of the equation. We're also going to need hydrogen for crafting ourselves those hydrogen fuel rods. Of course, at, like I mentioned before, you can do these things also, or let also machines do these things for you, but, you know... Since we got the option to handcraft things, it's fine. So, hydrogen fuel rods. These thingies are what we're going to use for interplanetary travel. For now, we're going to use them exclusively for that. Later down the road, they will become our staple fuel item. But for now, we're going to leave it like that. It's really important to note that this game always takes your fuel items in this order. One, two, three. Four. Like I'm following, the, like I was uh, following the cursor there. So that means this slot here will be the one that we're going to use for the hydrogen fuel rods when we travel between the planets. But there is a huge catch in there. We'll have to have everything we need over there to get our job going there, because at the end of the day, we will be alone on another planet. So, let's make sure we got all, all the stuff we need. So, we got smelters. Check. We ain't got enough mining machines for my taste, so let's uh, add on up a couple of these. We are going to need sorters. We got these. We're going to need conveyor belts. Well, probably we'll, pick, we'll be picking up a couple of these extra. Maybe not too many. Another thing, or you can't have too many. Another thing that's really important when you're going to a different planet is you ought to think about how to produce your energy there. Eta Lupi 1 has different uh, ratios of uh, power production there. So you see here, solar energy ratio is 114%, wind energy ratio is 70%. That means we're going to have less effect by placing down wind turbines and more effect by placing down solar panels. All in all, we are nevertheless going to go with the wind turbines there, because solar panels, for one, I need them on this planet, and for another, I personally like to rely on solar power only if I plan to do an entire solar uh, equator ring, otherwise it's not reliable enough for my taste. You can make solar power reliable also by in including batteries, but that's not what we're going to go for today. So, let's see. We got ourselves a stockpile of 17 hydrogen fuel rods. We're going to head on over to our lab spot 
and uh, going to grab ourselves some extra hydrogen there. So, by now it doesn't stockpile there. We're going to grab some of this conveyor belt. Whatever, it's fine. We're going to do better later, but for now we're just going to plunder these materials as we see fit. Okay, that's that, and let's do our last couple of refining steps, and yeah, I feel like we're ready. So, now, you're going to pluck in the uh, these bad boys there, and uh, next thing we do is we're going to check out where Eta Lupi 1 is. Click that, and uh, go for yourself and set up an indicator. So, now we can't lose the planet anymore. Now, let's check on out where is the planet. Let's look around. Well, can't see him from here. Whatever. Double tap space and hold space now. And move into the space. Okay, so now we're in space, and as you see here, Etalupi 1 is over there. So... Every movement now costs you energy. Keep that in mind. You're accelerating with shift. And you're decelerating with pressing S. What's really important there is... Every acceleration needs deceleration. Acceleration costs energy. Deceleration costs energy. So, you see next to your mecha... There's a little bit of a uh, number crunch. We see 1.4 AU... But below that is an ETA. The ETA is the estimated time of arrival, and we don't want to travel two minutes there. So what I'm doing here right now is I'm carefully moving, uh, in increasing my speed here. But as you see here, I'm also trying to keep my battery filled. So you can press Q and E to side roll a little bit, but seriously, in this mode, Try to keep your motion as minimal as possible and keep an eye on your batteries. Also, try to avoid it to be too fast, because every bit of speed that you allocate, you need to decelerate as well. And like I said, deceleration costs you energy as well. Another neat little trick to uh, cut costs there is to wait with your, um, with your transportation until the planet is really close, or with your travel. Wait with your travel until the planet is close to yours, you can use those orbitals. So, by the way, pressing tab here unlocks the cursor from the from this perspective. So we're getting closer to the planet, and uh, while we're getting closer, we're preparing now to break. Because, you know, we if we just uh, go too fast onto that planet, one of two things can happen. One thing, you just uh, happen to slide past that thing, I'm decelerating now, and uh, shoot out into the void and go just past that star, needing to turn and wasting a lot of time. Or you just get lucky and you uh, smack onto the planetary surface and land. You can also high speed just smack into the surface of these planets. Works out too. So now I'm slowly decelerating, decelerating, and uh, now I'm stopping there, and now when I'm close enough, I'm holding down the ALT key to land. Boom, we are on a new planet. This will take a little bit of practice until you get used to it. The control between planets is a little bit wonky, but as long as you have enough hydrogen fuel rods on you, it's no biggie. And really important, use those for interplanetary, uh, plan interplanetary travel only. They're basically a waste uh, to use them somewhere else. So, Etalupi 1. When we press M, we see now the whole planetary thing there. We are merely looking for one thing, and that's a titanium site. Of course, you can set up shop on this planet. No problem. If you press V, you see here, the, there's literally nothing this planet doesn't offer, except for two things. A nice amount of coal and oil. Oil is not existent there because you know it's a volcanic planet. Makes sense that there's no organic matter that has transformed into oil yet. So we can't really use this as our main planet either. Now we're going to set up shop here. Like I said, 
first things first, we're going to set on up a little power grid there of wind turbines in this scenario. You don't need to go too crazy with these because you're going to need power for only a couple of mining machines and a couple of furnaces and that's all we're going to do here. Later we're going to transport these materials from one planet to another but right now the only thing we can set up here is a bit of a production site where we're going to smelt down titanium automatically for us, stockpile that, and transport that back to our planet manually. We'll have to do that once, maybe twice, but not much more often than that. We are already researching the tech to get the job done automatically, but here's the thing. Interplanetary shuttles need titanium to be built in the first place. And uh, you actually don't need really tiny amounts of that. You really need a bit of more substantial amounts. So you need to haul that titanium manually. There's no way around that. So let's see if we get enough power out of that. I highly doubt it, but who cares? We're going to get started there. So where are those? There we are. So it's the same procedure here as everywhere. We're going to set up mining machines until we have catch every single node ear of the patch and don't shy away from double or triple tapping certain nodes it doesn't really matter the most important thing is we are extracting the ore as quick as possible so there we go let's power these bad boys up and we do as usual so let's remove that bad, big bad stone there little crap it's a huge one and uh, now we do our usual thing we're setting up some splitter here to unify the streams of these machines since we are still rolling with tier one belts we're only combining two mining machines on one belt because we're not able to transport more goods yet but that's okay it's just fine to have a bit of a small scale operation here so we're going to set up or handcraft a couple of storage mediums there and now let's check out the recipe for titanium titanium is a two ore into one ingot process so that means since we're producing six ore per second we can get up three furnaces producing 1.5 titanium per second easy so we're going to set that up like this here this time i'll be smarter than in the last episode so we're setting this up like that we do one guy as a template i'll just use the tier one sorters yeah we need one per second right right and then shift click shift left click that thing to copy it and uh, move our power supply there and rinse and repeat for, for the other side. There we go. So this is now our mining outpost. Wonderful, isn't it? So this is now our, our steady supply for titanium ingots and it might not be much but at least it's ours, so... Let's set that up properly. Here we have the same ratio. Three furnaces, because we have six items of... Uh, six units for each. And now we're just going to unify these. And that's pretty much it for now. We'll have to keep these guys busy for a while, of course. And we are going to come back here and connect that with a interplanetary logistics center. But for the time being, we can't really do much more than that. Set this thing up. Put up a large container box or two. 
and all that stuff into the boxes. That's all we can do for the time being. But at the same time, we are going to gain a nice stockpile of titanium while doing so. And this will help us out tremendously. So let's head on back to our technology panel. For a steady supply of yellow cubes, we'll have to set up the interplanetary uh, logistics first. So how about reversing our process a little bit? How about going for the thrusters and the vertical construction and the interplanetary logistics first? and then go for the yellow matrixes. I think I, I'm i more happy with this approach. So there we go. And now we're uh, just out here chilling. So what we're going to set up next is we're going to already set up the necessary facilities for the structure matrixes because I just wanted to stay here long enough to see if all these machines are continuously working, we'd get enough power to power up this whole place. And as you see here already, we got 337 titanium ingots in such a short amount of time. So it's uh, it's really that good. So, but we're actually not longer needed up here. This is all the titanium we're going to need for the time being. If we happen to need more for certain processes, we're going to go on back here. In the meantime, I'll let this uh, place work here. So let's press V again, and uh, we're going to set course for our home planet now. So this is Etelope 3. There we go. Indicator. Double tap space, hold space, and uh, then press W until you are in space. So here we go. Let's orient towards there. Speed on up until you are at a decent speed. So now we're going to do it a little bit less cautious. I personally like a speed of around 800 meters per second. And uh, after speeding up like that, I'm just uh, doing minor course corrections there. Like I said, it does take a bit of practice until you get used to it. You, I'd highly recommend you to um, use, oopsie, to uh, save your game beforehand, or you do your first interplanetary travel. Hey, we're passing the sun. Now, as you see here, the sun stole us our uh, acceleration there. We were passing that thing too closely, and now our sail speed is extremely low. So interplanetary travel has its little uh, has its little uh, caveats, but it's a lot. Of, it's a lot of fun actually. So what happened here? It, we're going to have a uh, slower way back home. As you see here, my speed is also slowly decaying, so we're, to, we're taking a really slow approach here. And we've already burned through the majority of our hydrogen fuel rods, so... It's a good opportunity to showcase that energetic graphite is not a bad material at all, but it's just not providing the same amount of steam as the hydrogen fuel rods provide. As you see here, you'll notice at any moment, when this, when this last one has been burned through, our energy regeneration will be a lot slower than before. The the further you proceed in this game, the less these things become an issue. We're you're you're going to use fuel stuff, fuel items later down the road that are a lot stronger than the stuff we're using right now. But the first couple of uh, space travels are therefore a little bit more special. All right. So I'm not going to accelerate any further now, because like you already know, we're going to need that for the deceleration. I have never tried what happens if you run out of energy in space, honestly. But I heard that your speed slows down to a crawl if you do so. 
I vaguely remember somebody writing something on Reddit about that once. So now I'm slowly, 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 slowly decelerating here by pressing S or whatever button you have bound for backwards movement. And now we're landing. So I think by now you should have an idea how these interplanetary travels are supposed to work. And once you're close enough, you just need to you just need to hold down the alt button and then you sink down onto the surface gently. Okay, we are back home, my friends. So let's head on back. We have now made a lot of progress, so let's talk about the next couple of things we have to do. So home sweet home. And let's head on back there. So, I want to check out the technology board there. So, for planetary logistics systems, we're going to need titanium ingots and these uh, purple canister thingies. We're going to produce them later, too. And for the production of logistics drones, we'll need those thrusters, but also processors. So, as you see here, there's a lot of technology between us and an automatic transport of these things to another planet. So we might as well start setting up the process for the structure matrixes. So we're going to need two different materials for that. The good news is the diamonds are actually quite easy to produce. So you are... Where's the data? So there's diamonds. Let's see where that technology is at. But the long story short there is we can come we can make diamonds out of well, coal and that's just that. I just uh, end up searching things there every time. Every time I end up searching things with this game. Where was it again? So sorry for being not sorry here. Err. Crystal smelting. Here it was. I knew it was somewhere. Here. Diamonds can be made out of energetic graphite. So that's the most harmless part of the equation. But these uh, titanium crystals, they need a lot more work. We're going to need titanium bars, so that's easy enough, but the organic crystals, we have all the tech already for that, so we can already think about that. We will need a lot of these guys, so you need, you see, we're going to produce, we're going to need to set up eight laboratories there, because one matrix needing eight seconds, so that means we're needing eight labs to produce one matrix per second. That also need means we're going to need one of these uh, crystals per second and one of these uh, high strength crystals per second. So let's see how many organic crystals per second will we need then? So we can make a quarter of a high strength crystal out of yeah, okay, so we need one organic crystal per second. Good enough. Now let's see what we'll need for that. So, we are going to need, and here things get really brutal, we're going to need 12 units of plastic per second, 6 units of oil per second, and 6 units of water per second. But that's all pretty harmless, but 12 plastic and the 6 oil per second are actually quite harsh. And that's where we're going to set up shop in the next uh, couple of episodes. The other thing we'll have to whip up there are the necessary things for the planetary logistics station. But the good news about all that is nothing here is any item that we need to produce continuously. These are one-time investments which will serve for us there. So that means these developments here can be ran in the background. What I'm going to do now in between this and the next episode is I'm going to prepare all the things we're going to need 
for the production of the organic crystals and then we're going to I'm going to record that because it's a pretty lengthy process to set up these things and this episode will therefore run a little bit shorter but I think that's just fine. I'm going to let those technology uh, thingies here complete in the background. I'm going to complete the necessary technologies for the interplanetary logistics in between. And in the next episode, we're going to focus into the organic crystal crafting. And then we're going to see where we'll end up, what has been done there in the background, and what we're going to be after in that one. So. Ah, here. Magnetic particle traps, are they called? They are not called. Uh, you know what I mean. So there's a lot of things we have in, in front of us, but it's going to be a lot of fun. So to give you a little bit of a uh, foresight about the upcoming episodes, so in the next one we're going to handle the organic crystals, and then we're going to set up our basic interplanetary logistics system, and then we're going to head on back all into hardcore mall building yet again, because with the unlocking of the yellow cubes, we will have access to a vast variety of new things that we need to set up, and our old starter base just won't cut it anymore, so we're going to go through big expansions after that. So, I hope you enjoyed that, drop me your comments down below, leave me your thumbs up if you enjoyed, and of course consider subscribing, fierce daily content coming up there. Enjoy the stuff you find there. Have a good one and see you soon. Bye-bye.